Welcome back to Light the Fuse. Charles, how you doing, sucker? I'm doing great, Drew. Yeah. Sorry to call you sucker, but if the shoe fits. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got to call a guy sucker. Yeah, I and, guess so. Uh, I guess today that's me. That's you today. Um, I'm so excited to, to be back with you, though, and then we have a great episode coming up that I think people are going to love. Yes. But... Uh, yeah, do we have any housekeeping? You know what I was thinking about today was that, you know, obviously Spider-Man No Way Home has sort of taken over the world. And there have been three Spider-Man franchises in less time than the Mission Impossible franchise has been going. <laughs> and there is there there could not be a Mission Impossible No Way Home because it's just been the same franchise all these years. And I just <laughs> was thinking about how amazing that is. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's still going. <laughs> and it keeps getting better and better. Pretty amazing that they have three Spider-Men in that movie. And this whole time we've had one Ethan Hunt. <laughs> one Ethan Hunt. <laughs> one no Luther. No multiverse. One Benji. Yeah. That's it. It's amazing. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, I did actually have one thing. Uh, one of our listeners named Lance Strickland sent us a video about the CIA using masks. Did you watch this video he sent? Did I send it to you? No, no. Okay, I'll send it to you. It's really great. It's a, a little clip just about how the CIA uses mask technology to, to you know, disguise themselves. And it sort of implies that this technology must, and it's similar to kind of what Mission Impossible was, like in the movies with the mask, you know, that they pull off and stuff. But the way that the video describes it is that, like, if the CIA is making this public now, that they've, they're beyond this technology now. Right. Which right. is pretty interesting. So uh, I w- we'll post it in our show notes. So if you go to our episode guide on the website, lightthefusepodcast.com, go to this episode, you will then find uh, the show notes. You'll find th- this video that Lance sent to us, which is really fascinating and, and a fun few minutes uh, worth watching. And I'm going to send it to you right now, Drew, so you can watch it later. Um, it's a really good... Uh, a really good, interesting thing. It's like exactly what Mission Impossible does. They use these masks. Wow. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, check that out if you have time. And uh, that's about all I've got. Okay. Well, we sh- yeah, we'll share this on Twitter too. I'm sure. And uh, yes, of course, so people can take a look. Well, I've just got a couple of shout outs to give before we get into it. Obviously, first, I want to thank Jeremy Dillon and his podcast, My Favorite Album. Each week, Jeremy talks to a different songwriter, musician, filmmaker, actor uh, about the music they love and how it's influenced them and their work. We also want to give a big shout out to John B., who's supported the show for a very long time, and to Elvis Ripley, who hasn't supported us for as long, but we still love him very much. So, Especially with that kick-ass name. Elvis Ripley. Yeah, what the fuck? How much ass is he kicking every day? He's kicking it. He's getting it, is what I understand. (laughs) Because if you have that name, sign up to a a lady or a fella in a bar and you throw that down, I mean, it's irresistible. Wow. Uh, But yes, thank you to all our supporters. We love you guys. We couldn't do the show without you. If you want to become a supporter, please think about going on to patreon.com forward slash light the fuse and signing up. There's so many different levels. And... uh, your, your world will be enriched, even incrementally, by the <laughs> nonsense that we put out yes, over there. So. absolutely. Okay, well, let's get into it, Charles, and we'll wrap it up afterwards. We've got Bogdan. Have we even said who we're talking to today? Yes, we're talking to Bogdan. We're talking to Bogdan. Bogdan. I don't know if we've said it in this intro or not. but Mirage. We, Mirage yeah. Gerbic. We're talking to him. We're talking to the Bogdan from Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. So please, please enjoy. And we'll be back. Raj, thank you so much for for coming on the show. First of all, and and also congratulations, you have a new baby. So we have to say that off the off the jump too. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's twelve p.m. and this is my morning coffee <laughs> because I went to bed at five a.m. So <laughs> oh, wow, I'm having so much fun. Well, <laughs> you obviously are. You're you're a you're a major uh, character in this movie, and uh, I was wondering sort of how you came to be a part of the Ghost Protocol gang. Uh, well, that's actually a funny story. As you can see, I have a cat too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually a funny story because I remember I just finished a big project and it was a long year. So I went for a vacation. And as soon as I landed, my agent called and, uh, and she was like, you know, there's this casting happening and I need you to, you know, travel and show up there and I cannot tell you what is it for, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a major film. 
and I really needed this vacation. So I was like, you know what, <laughs> just send them my reel and everything, and then we'll go from there. I connect. And she was like, I sent it already, but you know, they want to see you. And I was like, I cannot write now, really. And you know, check with them. Maybe they can see me when I come back. But right now, I just landed. I was like, well, like I was on the airport, you know, talking on the phone. And she was like, Mirage, I'm not sure. They won't tell, but I feel it could be for Mission Impossible. So I'm now like, you know, and I'm like, okay, do you know how many people will show up there? You know, and she was like, as far as I know, everybody's putting their people in like, so, you know, you need to show up. I was like, then especially like, you know, there's going to be so many people. So, so no, 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 no. So I'm ending that conversation. My wife is asking me like, well, what's happening? And I was like, ah, my agent called I, I, what she wants. I was like, she wants me to come to this audition. And what I, I was like, I don't know. It, it could be for Mission Impossible, but like, you know, it's a long shot. So let's just, you know, enjoy our vacation. She was like, go back there and don't come back if you don't book this. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went on the plane and show up at audition. Wow. <laughs> so, so she actually sent me there. And then after, and that audition went really well. Uh, but I didn't hear anything from them. And then uh, my agent emailed me like, I don't know, maybe, you know, two weeks after that. And she was like, they love you, but they're not sure you're, you, 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 you're right for this project. And for some reason, you know, when you feel, I was like, I'm right. I'm, I'm right for this one. And, and she, but she pretty much said no. But I felt, you know, when you like, you have this little burst. So I was relaxed, but I didn't think about it anymore. Anyway, she calls me like after, I don't know, two more weeks. And I'm again in some light. I, I'm traveling somewhere. Something is happening. And I remember crew was already in Prague. And she's calling and she's like, Mirage, you have to travel to uh, Prague. Brad Bird and Tom Cruise wants to see you. And I was like, it's an audition? And she's like, I don't know. I didn't get anything. I, I, they just want to meet you. I was like, okay. And she was like, by the way, I told them that you are fluent in Russian. <laughs> now, that, that's a thing, you know, because Croatian is... It sounds like Russian, so some words are the same, you know, but in, in Croatian it means, or in Bosnian or, or in Serbian, whatever, it means one thing, you know, but in Russian it, it means totally different things. So when I say, you know, the line in Russian, it, it sounds right because, you know, accent is right and everything's right, but I have to really memorize the lines, and, and, and which is also an easy part, but if I need to have conversation with someone who's Russian, and that person starts talking, <laughs> I cannot pick it up, you know, like what's going on, because it, it's just not the same language. It just sounds the same. Anyway, and I was like, what do you mean by that? She was like, I just said you fluent in Russian. They asked, I said, and I was like, okay, there will be some, you know, Russian guy here <laughs> speaking in Russian. This will be such an embarrassment. So I'm now traveling. I'm in a plane with this little <laughs> audio of like, you know, pretty much saying I, I can't speak Russian, you know, but in Russian. So I won't be totally embarrassed, like, you know, this simple phrase. And and I'm getting there, but luckily it was a, it was a meeting. It was a meeting that, that went really well. And pretty much it was like, you know, kind of like, I guess, chemistry check. And we spent really great, you know, time there. And I remember at one point, Brad, Bird was talking about, you know, character and what they're looking for and, you know, how it fits into the film. And he was saying, like, you know, we're looking for this, we're looking for that. And I was like, at one point, I was like, uh, okay, I, I, I can't follow anymore. So it was like, why? I was like, you're constantly saying we're looking for stuff here. And he was like, welcome to Mission Impossible. <laughs> and that was like, <laughs> that, that was it. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it's a funny story, you know, like, you know, because, yeah. Obviously, you come back in the film, but I don't know if that was always the case because I, I'm not sure if he, how much you know of this, but, you know, Vanessa Redgrave was supposed to come back from the first movie and be her character again. And that, that whole thing with the fog was kind of invented when she couldn't uh they couldn't get her so did they tell you sort of that you were coming back to the movie later was that always the plan or was it just that initial introductory sequence i think with with uh ghost protocol was like uh, writers were there you know always and then it was such a big set and 
things were changing. Like, you know, the trip was followed, but, but, but they were changing things. So no one told me that I actually, uh, I finished my shoot and it, that went really well. And we said our goodbyes. And when I went home, I went back home and I, I think like a couple of weeks after that, my agent called me and, they, uh, and she was like, they want you back. And then uh, I heard that, 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 that we'll do this Dubai thing with uh, diamonds and everything. But, but that's how they're pretty much, you know, it was like very specific feeling and, and situation because they just had so much money. <laughs> you know, it, it was like, it, it was big production. And it was like, you, and you could feel that something special is happening because I think last Mission Impossible was 2006 before that, yep. right? So, so it wasn't like year after year, you had like this gap of, I don't know, five years and they were all putting this like big film together. We did all, and, and you could just feel like, you know, they would change whatever needs to be changed in order to, be, to make a great film. So, so I, I, I mean, I, I was pleasantly surprised, but it was still like, you know, when you're hired, you're supposed to be there, you know, be available yeah. until the end of the shoot. So I just went back and then we went to Vancouver and yeah, it was a good ride. Wow. Well, there were two versions of that opening prison breakout, too. I, did they film the first one, Charles? Or was that just planned? What was the the one you're referring to? The one with Benji taking his jaw off and all this. I don't think they ever filmed it, okay. no. I don't think so. So, that, so your, your, all of your pr- prison stuff was, was what ended up in the movie, I'm assuming. I Yes, yes. I okay. So. Well, can you talk about working with, with Brad Bird? He is a, he's a character. Oh my God, he's like, he's amazing. I love Brad Bird, really. Like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my in general. I'm gonna start my 55th film, and still, Brad Bird is like, you know, top director that I ever worked with because, like, you know, he, the way he approaches uh, actors is, is is amazing. You know, he will let you offer, and then you know, if if what you're offering is something that will work then he will be very clear about you know you offer this and this works and if it doesn't work he will be able to adjust it in order to work or in gentle way guide you to the point where you're going to do what what was best for film but the thing with uh, and and i think that that just brad bird and tom cruise were such a great team just because you know when energy was just matched in a way that it's it's a big film it's a big action film and and, and it's hard you know it's hard work every day like you know with a lot of different locations with a lot of stunts uh, uh, you know everything but way uh brad bird approach to it and, and and tom was just like you know everybody was in this mood let's make a movie that was like a month that was like how, how they would start and then it, it would end like that. Doesn't matter how many hours we have to go through the day. So it was really a pleasure to work with him. Uh, I was, I remember uh, I had a whale check and we, we, we just couldn't do it time wise, but, but uh, I remember he was asking for me for Tomorrowland when he did uh, after that. It never happened, but I, I remember I was so excited just to be in position to, to work with him again. And I hope in future, you know, I will have that opportunity because yeah, I, I enjoyed every second working with him. Really, really, and it, it's important, for, especially because you know, when you're part of something that big, uh, then you know sometimes you see actors not just in this film, but whenever I was in, in, on big sets, you know, sometimes actors just like want to deliver so hard that 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 it can, it can be you know something that is almost like an obstacle. You know what I mean? Because you're pushing really hard. And I've seen that happening. I mean, me personally, I, I had so much fun, you know, shooting this film. So I didn't have that problem. But I've seen people like, you know, really getting nervous and, 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 and you know, especially people who will come for a day or some, some small role. And then how he would approach to it and how he would explain them and guide them, you know, through the material until they get in the position to really enjoy working, doing the character. Uh, that, that that's ability that he has, and and I think it's very important and, and and almost crucial to have director of that kind, especially in the big films, because real responsibility is huge. Right. So yeah, yeah, I loved it. I love him. 
what was it like uh, having Tom Cruise as, as a scene partner? I mean, were you did you guys rehearse a lot before you shot? Yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. But but you know what? With Tom, the thing is like I cannot say that many times I was really inspired by watching someone work. I, I, I you always have you know when you work with partners, you will take something or say something doesn't really work, but it's collaboration, so it works. But with Tom, you, you have this, you know, image about him because he is in the business forever and he, he did all these major things, you know, and then you, you have this idea how he would maybe approach the work. And then you see this guy who shows up and would work with such enthusiasm and working so hard and getting like, you know, playing with this like a child and, and having the same amount of energy from the beginning to the end, you know, day after day, just, you know, pushing, working, changing, let's try this, let's try that, rehearsing, always there. You, you never have like, you know, you will never get someone else to work with you and then Tom will show up, you know, for, for the shoot or something like that. So I, I remember like first day, and it was like almost like a meeting and they were talking and then there's this AD and, and there's, you know, him, me and Tom Cruise and he's, uh, they're, they're talking about stunts and, and Tom will do all his stunts, of course. And they're like looking at me and, uh, uh, and he's like, Mirage, do you need a stunt? Will you do all your stunts? And I'm like, you know, standing next to him. And I'm like, yes, I'll do all my stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Such a, like you know, and I said it like you know. <laughs> After five days, there was no place in my body where bruised was. I was so bruised. <laughs> I remember at one point we're running, and it's like hard to keep up with him. Like we're running to this, you know, when, when we it's a prison break, and there, we have like bunch of stairs because we are actually shooting in Prague, and there, there is this like old prison that is now a movie set, and that's the only thing that use it for. So everything is legit, like, you know, steel is steel, iron is iron. So we're running, you know, and we're going through these holes and like glass doors, huge iron doors, and Tom is running through and I'm trying to keep up and I hit my knee on that door to the point where I, I, I could feel it swelling like while, I hit, while I'm hitting and only thought like I have, because I don't know, did I, you know, <laughs> break my foot or <laughs> my knee or not? Only thought I have is like, I'm going to finish this film. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish the shooting. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to finish the shooting. Like, and then he's like, are you okay, Mirage? I'm like, I, I, yes, I am. But I look at my knee. And, and, and he had this cut here for, for, from like, you know, a couple of hours before. He was like, yeah, look at this cut. And I'm like, look at this. And he's like, look at, and we're showing bruises to each other. But we were totally bruised. Like, you know, he was like, man, you're making action, mo <laughs> action movies. So, so yes, it, it was like, in a way, like, that's something that I just, like, you know, it was 10 years ago, but something that I just picked up from him. So sometimes when I'm on set and we're going through the long day and you don't really feel like doing it today, that, that's the thing that I, that, that, that I always remember, you know, the way he approaches work. Because sometimes you just take it for granted, you know. I, I, I'm just doing this since, only this since I was, like, you know, 18 and you're going through projects, you know, from project to project. And, and sometimes you just forget that it's supposed to be something that you enjoy every second. Because if, if, if you don't have fun doing it, that audience, audience won't have fun watching it, you know. So I feel like, you know, he, he's so much into it. And it's so part of him that, that, you know, after that, I didn't really allow myself to be anything else when I'm when I actually agree to do the job that that's how I I, I try to do it. Wow! Right? Yeah. You know? He changed you. He did. He did, and that's interesting because like I never in my life had like you know when when you, especially when I was like when I was in my twenties you know and then like they they say okay who you look into who would be an actor that you would be want to be like or you know what I mean I never had that in that way I had actors that I admired because of this or that, but that would be like, you know, one thing that I like and that I would just like, I like it, but it's yours. I will have something in mind. But he did change me. I have to say, he did really change me in a very, you know, subtle way because it, it wasn't something that was pushed. It was just something that I had to keep up with in order to, you know, match. 
and, and for us to have uh, the result that we were looking for. But I, I just stepped out of that at the end as a, as, a, as a not a different actor, but maybe actor with like a little bit more clear approach. Right. Were, did the two of you, or I guess in general for the for the scenes you were in, were you trying to stay word perfect with the script or were you guys doing, was there room for improvisation? You know, did you guys work on the scene at all while you were doing it or was it kind of like just stay to the script? We did. We did. And and it, it, in a way, like, you know, lines would be would be the same, but even if, if something will be changed, like I said, you know, writers were there. So, so, so we were, it was, it was really collaboration, but the way how we're going to put together the scene, you know, that was very open. That was very open. I, I remember... And that's something that we would just walk in and we would start working on things. And great thing is like, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're okay to offer, and that's, that's, that's a great thing with Brad, you know, when you're okay to offer, then they, after, you know, some time, they, they, they really expect you to offer. So a vision was all, always clear what they want. But if you, if you would add something to it, it was very appreciated. I remember like, when we were blocking the scene, when on Ethan will like you know walk in and grab Bogdan, and so it was like you know it's a raid and, and the prison is burning and you know so we were trying to figure like you know how would Bogdan react to it like you know because if he's one of the guys then he doesn't really need to be saved right so what is he doing at this point? And we were trying we were you know walking around that cell trying different things and then I was like you know what let let, let me just let me just be here. And I went behind the bed and I was down and I was like, call me. And he was like, I'm down. And I was like, you know, oh. <laughs> and he was like, do that again. And, and I did it. And then let's, let's try this. And we, we did it. And, and at one point, like you, they were all so, you know, happy with things. And then, and that's actually how we, we shot it. And after that, I remember like, you know, whenever we work, like, you know, working on a scene and then it was like, Brad would be like, Raj, what do you think? And I would be like, maybe we could do this. And sometimes it would be great. Sometimes we'd be like, no, <laughs> but I was asked, you know? So, so yes, which is something that I, I really love. We had all the freedom, but it, it, it was very controlled freedom. If, if you know what I mean, you, you, you knew who is running the show, but if you have something to offer every time, you know, something would be offered. Like, you know, and if you add something that, that will work, you know, it would work. You know, those diamonds are for Bogdan. No, I'm good. That was that, you know, but it was funny. It stayed there. <laughs> so, so we, could, we could play like that. And that's, that's, you know, how you can do the best things. I remember, I, I won't say the project, but like last year, actually right before the pandemic, I was shooting something and, and it was a TV show. And anyway, so we, we were rehearsing and the director is like, you know, if you can, yeah, hit that mark and then look left and then deliver that line and then go to the other mark. And say, and I was like, oh, okay, but maybe we can go like, you know, play this way and that way and then just try to, and he was like, oh yes, 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 let's do that, let's do that. And we were shooting and we went through the scene and you hear just like, cut, mirage, that was amazing. Now do it my way, please. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like, he doesn't even want to, you know, talk about it. Just, you know, do what <laughs> we know which one will be in, a, in the final. <laughs> so when you have someone like that, you, you really, you know, it's hard to collaborate. But, but here it was like, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Is it time for the big question, Charles? Should we ask her? Yeah, I guess also, I just wanted to, I guess, quickly ask too about uh, Fat. You were in the Fast and the Furious. The latest Fast and the Furious movie, right? Yes. What was it like being in another big franchise? It was great, but that that was an uh, <laughs> with me. It's always something like you know, there's a story behind. So I was actually auditioning for that studio for something else, and I didn't get it, and I forgot about it, and, and so I was I was like you know driving, and my manager is calling and and. He was like, Mirage, they're checking your availability. And like, the, 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 I, I can't remember, like, you know, the dates now. And I was like, for what? And he's like, for some studio film. And I was like, okay, check out what this, but I'm pretty much available. And then he's, you know, coming back to me and he, he's like, okay, Mirage, we got an offer. It's, it's Fast and Furious. And I was like, okay, cool. So when they send the offer, I've seen that all the like people that I was auditioning for the other thing were actually people of Fast and Furious. So, so that one came without, 
audition for the actual movie, but I, I, I was doing something totally different. But yeah, that that was like, I don't want this to, to, to come out bad, but it's really great to be in a big set. I swear to God, not because I'm used to big sets, but just because everything works for you. You know what I mean? Right. Everything works for you, so nothing is there to distract you from what you need to do. And whenever I go to, to set like that, I feel like I'm on vacation. I'm actually having fun playing this game, and someone will pay me to do that. You know, right. and money is good also. <laughs> so right. That yeah. helps. But that's really, you know, how how I felt in Fast and Furious too. Again, like you know, you always have freedom to to, to work because I, I guess in order to hire you for such a big big film, you know, they have to trust you. You know what I mean? So they will let you offer which is great. And it's so strange, like how you, how you use the things easily, because I remember coming to Mission Impossible and just like the way they fly you, the way they're, where they're going to put you to stay, the way they're going to treat you. You, you know, first couple of days, you're like, okay, what's going on? But then after a while, you get used to it. So right after Mission Impossible, I went to another film like next week, which was decent budget. I'm talking about a couple of million. It was decent budget. It's a feature film. And, <laughs> and I remember like walking to my trailer. I'm like, Is this a step? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> because it's like so easy to get used to good things, you know? So that's pretty much how I feel, you know, whenever I'm on, on, on like, you know, big blockbuster, when it's a wrap, like, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, good times. I know very quickly, I wanted to ask you to rank the Mission Impossible movies. I'm assuming you've seen all of them now. Yes. Okay. So, well, you, you know what, this, this is like. First of all, I'm a fan. I'm really a fan. I'm a fan of Mission Impossible. So, and, and that was like my my main thing when I when I was actually being a cast of Mission Impossible. I, I went there as a fan, and I was I was so happy to be there. But before Ghost Protocol, I remember second Mission Impossible was like you know really really high in my eyes because it was just big big action film, you know. And after that, I mean, I love every Mission Impossible. But the thing with Ghost Protocol, and and it's not because I'm in it. Is because what Brad Bird brought. I think uh, he brought this, like, you know, uh, possibility of not being perfect every second because you can actually watch this huge action film and still laugh here and there. And it's not just Bogdan, all the characters w- w- had, had these moments, like, you know, yeah. tape will have self destroy or, you know, things will happen this, this way or that way. Uh, Jumping across the building and, and something goes wrong. So, so you had constantly these moments where they are human beings going through things that they are doing extremely well, and you really cheer for them and you're there. But you can also relax at a moment. You you can laugh at a moment, and it was very very warm if you want. So so yeah. it, it's still on top of my list. Yeah, you know, and and I'm sure that part of the reason is because I'm attached to it. You know, so you cannot really watch it anymore in the way you did. Right. You know what I mean? Because this is your baby. But if I would have to, you know, elaborate and explain why, that's the thing that I just loved about this one. And the fact that we had to wait for it. I don't know. But for me, it, it was a big deal. Because when I heard that new Mission Impossible will come up, even before I knew that I would be in it, it was like, wow. Yeah. Because I didn't know will, 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 will we ever have uh, another Mission Impossible. We, we had three, right? And then we had six year gap or five year gap. But after that, pretty much every year or every other year we had it. So it, it was kind of like I was expecting to see it. Right. But I guess because of that gap, those protocol was also like kind of, you know, special to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is a perfect way to, to cap our conversation. And Mirage, thank you so much for accepting this mission. We love your character. We love the movie. So this was a big thrill. Thank you so much, guys. I had so much fun. And we're back. 
Charles, you just looked at your watch. How we doing? We got it. We got enough time here. <laughs> We're doing great. Are we getting kicked out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Woo! we got plenty Woo! of time. Plenty of time. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, well, I thought that was a really fun chat. I loved his energy. He's still so enthusiastic about the character and the movie. Yes. It's just great to hear. Yeah, he had some uh, great stories for us, and uh, it's uh, of course a pleasure to get to a cast member on the show. Yeah, I mean, after last week, now now I'm I'm more determined to get sort of supporting players that have small but memorable roles in these movies. Yeah. So. Well, and I want to get some IMF team members on on the show. We do. We need some IMF team members. We need to get some IMF team members. This is like a, a goal for the year. I think we need to get some. Yes, for sure. But at the same time, there's so many people that have made small but lasting impressions on this I franchise. Know. So if there's somebody somebody that you think we should talk to, obviously let us know. Um, yeah, we are always all ears. All ears. And you have a lot of shout outs to give this week, from what I understand. Uh, I do have some shout outs to give. Yeah, I want to give a special thank you to Jacob Ballard and Robbie J. Martin and Jacob from Holland. Uh, thank you guys for making this episode possible, and thank you to all our Patreon members. Uh, so you should definitely sign up for our Patreon, as we say every week, and uh, we, we would stop saying it if, if you all just signed up. So just sign up, every single last one of you, and then you'll never hear us talk about it ever again. Yeah. Except for you'll be able to hear our bonus episodes every week. And that's all the hearing you'll want out of this. Wow, that is really the, yeah, it's an <laughs> optimum kind of thing, I think, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You get yeah. to hear us wax poetic about the Matrix movies and the Scream franchise, which, you know, we were both fans of the new Scream movie and the franchise in general. So we had a good long chat about Scream. We are obviously huge fans of John McTiernan, the director of Die Hard and Hunt for October and Predator. So we did a, a big episode about all of his movies and we ranked his entire filmography. And that was a fun one that a lot of people seem to like. It was a, a lot of likes on that one on our Patreon. So that was a, a good, good episode idea. I think it was Iggy, one of our Patreon supporters suggested that one. And uh, yeah, so sign up for the Patreon. And if that's too rich for your blood, you can always... Give us a like or a, uh, you know a review on one of the, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Reviews are really great, and then you can also, uh, if you are willing to fill, uh, shell out a few bucks, you could go to our merch store, which is linked from our website, lightthefusepodcast.com. In the merch section, you will get linked to our T Public page, which is a URL that is too complicated for me to remember. So it's better for you just to go to our website and uh, get it there, and you can see uh, shirts and uh, masks and pins. And stickers and all kinds of fun stuff. Notebooks. Uh, get that. That supports the show. Um, and uh, what else, Drew? Well, we would love for people to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Light the Fuse Pod. That's a great way to keep up with all of our things. And every time there's a sale on Tee Public, we'll link to that, obviously, and let you guys know what's going on there. And, you know, just keep an eye on us. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to see. And we'll try our best to make that happen. And we got a lot of fun things planned for 2022. So, um Hopefully we'll be doing those things in person. And if you want to know about them, first and foremost, obviously become a Patreon member and follow us on social media. This this year is going to be big. we got a lot of fun things in store. We should yes. say who we've got next week. We teased it in last week's episode. But this week okay. we can say Blake Howard. Yes. Who does uh, One Heat Minute. And he's done a lot of other – his One Heat Minute has sort of sp spun off to do – Zodiac and Last of the Mohicans and some other things. He's had Michael Mann on his show. He's had uh, Paul Thomas Anderson on his show. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to him. It's a really great, fun chat. And he he's the one you were saying you wanted to replace me yeah. with, potentially. Yeah. Uh, because he gives such great analysis of the movies, and I don't. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> I never said that. Charles is putting words in my mouth. But no, Blake was wonderful. Is that a two-parter or a three-parter? I think it'll be a two-parter. I don't know. We'll, okay. we'll we'll sort it out. We haven't we haven't okay. done that yet. But uh, okay, yeah, I'm excited. It was a really good chat. Like there's a lot yeah. to talk about. We've got episodes coming up about um, Robert Towns' version of the, the screenplay for the first movie. Yeah, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff. I don't want to give it too much away, but we've got a lot of things coming your way, and uh, we're just so excited to deliver all of this to you guys. So please, thank you. For your support, but please, you know, think about getting on the Patreon and um, following us that way. Yes. Every little bit helps. So we will be back next week with Blake Howard Part 1. And until then, that's it. Right, Charles? Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much.
Thanks again for listening, everyone. And before we go, another mission, should you choose to accept it, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember that you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LightTheFusePod and email us questions or comments at LightTheFusePodcast at gmail.com. This message will self-destruct in five seconds.